If it wasn't obvious before, I'd say it's pretty obvious now. Sharks do some weird shit. But it seems like the internet just regurgitates the same old shark behaviours again and again, which are still cool, don't get me wrong, although you've likely seen them before. I'm talking things like epaulette sharks walking on land, spinner sharks spiralling out of the water at rocket speed, snapping their jaws, or bull sharks' crazy ability to live in fresh water. Or maybe even the strange repetitive aerial gaping behaviour that's occasionally seen in big predatory sharks like white sharks or tigers. All of those things are cool, but we've seen them before. So I thought today that I'd show you guys some weird shark behaviours that you maybe haven't seen before. Sharks that use floating logs or even other sharks as literal scratching posts, ones that chase drone shadows or even ones that are now known to make sound. Here's five of the stranger shark behaviours that you might not have heard about before. Up first then we're going to have a look at the sharks that were very recently discovered to be making sounds. If you're a long-term watcher of the channel you'll remember a couple of years ago we did a video all about sharks making sound which seems a little bit counterintuitive considering sharks don't actually possess an organ that's used for sound production. For example, we humans use our vocal cords or larynx to produce sound that allows us to talk. Birds have a super specialized organ called a syrinx to produce their songs, but for sharks they haven't got an organ in their bodies like that that they can use for sound production. In the previous video we did on shark sound, we looked at swell sharks that make a pretty tenuous barking noise when they expel water from their mouths, a whale shark that sounded like it was roaring which could have been some kind of underwater burp, and then two species of ray that were using their spiracles to click as a potential communication method or as a defense mechanism. Of those three, I'd say that the clicking stingrays were the closest ones to making intentional noise, but at the time of making that video, there weren't any sharks that were doing the same. Although a few weeks ago, a shark known as the rig shark stepped up to claim that title. Rig sharks, otherwise known as the spotted estuary smoothhound. Nice and descriptive name there, guys, real creative. Anyway, these sharks are pretty common in the waters off New Zealand and just so happen to be the subject of Dr. Carolyn Nieder's PhD. Her project at the time revolved around the hearing abilities of these sharks as well as other ones but as she handled them in tanks she started hearing a strange clicking noise. Here have a little listen to this. Initially, she dismissed that noise, believing the common assumption that sharks weren't capable of making sound. But the clicking noise just kept on happening, and it was happening every time the sharks were being handled in between experiments. In the end, Dr. Nida decided that she had to test it out, so she placed 10 of the rig sharks in underwater tanks with some high-tech microphones. Each of the sharks were held by a researcher for 20 seconds, and every single one of them produced a repeated clicking noise in the first 10 seconds of being held. Now, because the sound was only produced as they were being held by a researcher, it would suggest that it's more to do with them being startled than some kind of communication strategy between individuals. And that was backed up by the fact that the frequency of the sound they were making was well outside of their own hearing range, meaning that they likely can't even hear the clicks that they're making. The majority of these clicks were coming in between 2400 and 18,500 hertz, and these sharks can only hear between 150 and 800 hertz. So if they can't even hear the sounds that they're producing, what's it for? Well, that frequency range is within the range of hearing for some of their predators, like toothed whales, so it could be a defense mechanism to try and startle them. I'm not quite sure a little click's going to deter a fat bottlenose dolphin, but kudos for trying rig sharks. Now I know that a lot of you might have heard about this one before, but I still think it's a really strange one and it often goes under the radar when we talk about cool shark behaviours. We all know wobbegongs, right? The weird flattened carpet shark, aptly named because it looks like a patterned carpet that sits on the bottom of the ocean waiting to unleash hell on unsuspecting fish. Yeah, they're a pretty cool shark species. We know that wobbegongs are ambush predators and I'm sure you've heard a thousand times how their tassels are used to help them look like coral. But did you know that wobbegongs also employ a different hunting strategy? One that's not been seen in any other shark species that we know of anyway. These particular sharks are known to perform caudal luring, which involves them using their tail to lure in a prey species. As if it wasn't already equipped with enough hellish hunting adaptations, nature just threw in that one as well to turn this shark into a serious predator. This tail waving behavior has only been caught on film a few times, but you can see in this clip here exactly how it works. That waving tail is purposely moved back and forth, mimicking the behavior of a regular bony fish who just happens to be refuging in the crevice or cave. That's called aggressive mimicry if you're wondering by the way. Anyway, that tail slowly drifting back and forth makes it seem to other fish species that the cave is a safe spot to hang out, drawing them to within striking distance of the wobbegong's mouth. And well, you know what happens next. Oh, 
Up next, we've got a pretty cool shark behavior from probably the most famous shark of all, the great white shark. Drones have absolutely revolutionized the way we observe shark species in their natural habitat. They provide us with a really unique aerial viewpoint that has allowed us to study them without influencing their natural behavior. Or at least we thought we weren't influencing their natural behavior. Footage released by Carlos, AKA the Malibu artist, appears to show juvenile and adult white sharks interested in the shadows produced by his drone. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you any of the raw footage of this because Carlos really doesn't like me using any of his stuff, so you'll have to go and check it out on his channel. But in some of the videos he's got, it does appear at first glance that the white sharks might be somewhat interested in the shadow produced by the low-flying drone, perhaps able to see the contrasting colors and shadows on the surface of the water. Now, anyone who's been around fish before will know that there's lots of fish species who are often spooked by shadows, believing them to be a potential predator. So it would make sense for white sharks to be able to recognize shadows, especially considering that juveniles have been known to occasionally eat seabirds, of which probably would be producing a shadow somewhat similar to a drone. Again, I'd be super interested to see if this observation could be backed up with some scientific research to try and prove it. Because I think a little caveat here would be that light and therefore shadows can behave differently in air and water. It's all to do with refraction. I think a cool thing here would be to try and get some underwater footage looking up towards the surface just to see how visible that drone shadow is. And importantly here, factor in white shark vision to see how it might be being perceived by the shark itself. Now, while this next one does involve a shark, it's not exactly a shark behavior. Regardless though, it came across my desk a few weeks ago and I thought it was awesome. So we know that fish are often seen hanging around sharks. You've got the dreaded remoras who like to stick themselves to sharks or even pilot fish that always seem to be hanging around oceanic white tips feeding on parasites across their body. But scientists recently discovered there's one species of fish that actually uses a shark to help it hunt its own prey. The scientists in question were studying a rare summer aggregation of sandbar sharks off the coast of Italy when they noticed a strange behavior between blue runner fish and the sharks. On over 30 different occasions, they observed the blue runner fish using the shark's body to hide themselves and ambush their prey on the sea floor. The fish would swim close to the sandbar shark, matching its speed and direction before breaking formation to attack its prey below. It's a really strange example where the fish is actively putting itself in danger with a species that would undoubtedly eat it to try and help it catch its own prey. This crazy daring behavior in that case clearly provides some kind of beneficial payoff to make it worth the risk, so it likely does increase their effectiveness at hunting. The scientists who wrote the study even speculated that the blue runner fish might be able to swim at faster speeds by drafting behind those sharks. It's the same concept as in a Formula One car when one of them gets in the slipstream of the other and drag ends up being reduced. The blue runner fish here is experiencing less drag because it's in the slipstream of the shark and so it can move at faster speeds to surprise its prey. I just think that one is so cool and even though it's not technically a shark one, what a behavior to capture on film. So we've just seen there one fish using an object, in that case another fish, to try and gain an advantage. And that's kind of similar to our next strange shark behavior. Now normally debris in the marine environment isn't a good thing for sharks. It's what my master's thesis was about. Sharks get entangled in it, injured by it, and even killed by it. But a couple of years ago, some scientists witnessed a shark using marine debris to its advantage. While on a deep sea research expedition off the coast of Canada, the scientists spotted a floating felled log that was covered in barnacles. To stop it from damaging their scientific equipment, they towed it away from the area, and just after releasing it, a salmon shark appeared out of nowhere and began scratching itself on that log. Two years later, the same scientists observed another salmon shark performing that scratching behavior on a drifting piece of fiberglass. On both of the occasions, the salmon shark scratched their undersides, dorsal side, and their lateral sides repeatedly on the pieces of debris. And both were seen with visible parasites on their fins, which means they were likely using that debris as a scratching post to rid themselves of those pesky critters. It's thought that sharks are capable of experiencing the sensation of itching from parasites. And so sometimes I guess it's just kind of nice to relieve that itch. It does potentially come with risk though. Like I said earlier, marine debris can often entangle or even kill sharks. And so these salmon sharks are likely weighing up the risk with the benefit of the scratch. Look, the scientists even say that in the research paper and they decided to reference me. Cheers, guys. It's definitely risky performing this strange scratching behavior on marine debris. And so some sharks have been known to use other things as scratching posts. Sometimes they'll even use other larger sharks. Here's some footage of silky sharks performing that same scratching behavior along the bodies of whale sharks. It's so interesting to see as well the direction of the scratch there from the silkies is the opposite direction to which the dermal denticles are facing. As in they're swimming up the rough side of the shark because if they swam down the body of that whale shark, it would be smooth and wouldn't end up scratching them. So we know watching that footage, they're actively trying to scratch themselves because they're rubbing in the abrasive direction along that whale shark. I think the best part about it as well is that the absolutely massive whale shark is completely unfazed by those silkies at all. It just carries on cruising. What a champ. That particular clip there is actually part of the same section of footage that I mentioned to you earlier, where the whale shark made a pretty strange noise that kind of sounded like a roar. 
before. And if you wanted to hear what that sounds like, you can do so in this video right here. It's the video we spoke about earlier where we looked at sharks making sounds. And to be honest, it's just worth the click for that bizarre whale shark sound alone. So what are you waiting for? Give it a click.